Welcome to the last webinar in the 2022 series. I am so excited to welcome Dr. Daniel Zimmerman tonight. He is the Dean for the School of Business and Technology Management, and he's going to be talking to you about preparing for your oral defense. No matter where you are in your program, it is never too soon to prepare for this exciting event. Dan, I know you've got a lot planned for tonight, so I'm going to hand it over to you to take awesome. it away. Thank you very much, Dr. Frederick. All right, for the agenda, welcome. This is our welcome right now. We're going to do a quick little icebreaker, and then we're going to talk a little bit about getting ready to defend, you know, and I came up with six steps for defense preparation. I know that this is a, a big topic, um, and a lot of universities do it differently. And so we were starting just to build our, our databases and our webinar presentations on this type of information. And so this is going to be a seminal piece that's going to be great that you guys can watch over and over and over again, you know, and very foundational. It's high level. Okay. So we're not going to get too much into the nitty gritties. A lot of the nitty gritties you're going to do with your chair. Okay. Or a committee. But for this, we're going to be very high level. The defense is really the fun part, right? And it should be viewed as fun. But there are some things that we need to do so that you are feeling the fun while you're doing it, right? Because if you come into a cold, it can be extremely stressful. So what I want to do is I want to do a quick little mindset and visualization icebreaker. So close your eyes for 60 seconds. And I want you to visualize yourself being done with your defense, right? You're just finished up. You're, you're done. They've introduced you as doctor. And you're just taking a deep breath. So some of the things I want you to think about is what does it feel like? You know, is it relief? Is it, you know, less anxiety? You know, think about where you're sitting. Where, where are you sitting? Are you sitting in your office? Are you sitting at the library? You know, what are the sounds in the room? What time of day is it? You know, is it early morning, afternoon, night? It's the sun setting in the background. You know, are there street lights out? Do you hear, hear crickets tripping? You know, how are you dressed? You know, are you wearing a sweatshirt? Or are you wearing professional wear? How does your slide deck look? Does it look perfect? All right. So think about this, you know, how does it feel? How does that feel? Does that feel good? So I think we are, we're about 60 seconds here. Tell me who wants to, who wants to volunteer? What does that feel like? If you want to come on, you come on and, you know, exp tell us what you feel. Introduce yourself and your school and then what you feel. Hi, I'm Tamara. I'm from DMP program. It feels amazing. And nice. I finally can have a day off and not be stressing about a paper. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? And Vanessa, I feel really proud. Very good. Thank you, Vanessa. Anyone else? I'm Jill, and I think it's a sense of accomplishment because it's a terminal degree, so it's something that you're finally done, done. Very good. I, I like that term, terminal degree. I'm Sophia, and I think it's amazing, and it's an accomplishment that you can just put a check mark on. Yep, absolutely. Very good. Thank you. We have time for one more. I'm Michelle, and it's a sense of accomplishment and, and feeling proud and relieved. Relief, right? You know, you're, trust me, when you get done, you're going to be like, what am I going to do myself? <laughs> you spend all your time reading articles and doing papers and, you know, researching. And then all of a sudden you're like, now you have this time block of three hours at night. And you're like, what am I going to do with myself? It's a great time to catch up on Netflix. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Great. Well, I wanted you guys to get into that mindset to know what it's like to actually feel what it feels like to be done. You know, it, there is no feeling like it when you finish and your chair says, you know, congratulations, doctor, so-and-so. I'm going through six different steps here on how to set up for your defense. And, and again, it doesn't start a week before your defense, okay? It doesn't start two weeks before your defense. It actually can start 
you know, very, very early, maybe like four, five, six, six weeks before your defense. So one thing you want to make sure you do is structure. You need to know the structure of the defense. Okay. Now we have three different schools. You need to know how your defense is going to be structured. Okay. And the way that you do that is you ask your chair. Don't wait for your chair to tell you. You need to be proactive and ask your chair and do not assume you know based on stuff that you've seen on YouTube or, you know, or that you've heard, you know, you want to ask your chair how the defense is going to be organized. And you want to ask questions like, who's going to be there? Is it going to be open to the public? Can my family be there? Can my peers and colleagues be there? How long should it be? For some, some dissertation defenses, they last 15 minutes. For some, like my school, for the, the, the SCS, they range from 25 to 35 minutes. And sometimes we have to cut them off. So how long is the presentation going to be based on your school? What's the medium that it'll be presented in? Is it going to be in Zoom? Is it going to be in GoToMeeting? So you need to understand exactly how, what and how it's going to be presented. Will I be introduced? You know, and uh, again, this is, this is a key component because chairs should have a script introducing candidates for the recording, but you always want to, you always want to know so that you don't just jump in and they don't blindside you and say, okay, recording, go. And you're like, oh, wait, I thought I was going to be introduced. You want to know how it's going to work. How is it going to be structured? Will this be recorded and you can review it later? Will the committee be asking questions? And will I know the decision at the end of defense? These are all standard questions that you should be thinking about as you're preparing. And you can begin thinking about this early, early on in your last class or even in your second to last class, depending on what program you're in. Now, we understand what the structure is. Now we want to outline the parts that you're going to be presenting. One of the biggest things that I see as a problem is the reading of PowerPoint slide. They did not do the preparation. They did not practice. And it looks really tacky. So we want to make sure that we are outlining our, our research and what we're going to be saying uh, prior ahead of time. Okay. So you want to understand your research forwards and backwards. You want to make sure that you have an outline so you can develop. So you, you have that transition within your slide deck, you know, and that you understand some certain talking points. Okay. If you were a professional speaker, what do you normally do? Your, you, when you get up on stage, you have your first like three or four lines memorized. Okay. You'll get up on stage and you will memorize and you will just recite them verbatim because what that does is it sets the tone, it eases your nerves, you know, it calms you down and it lets you survey the audience to see what any reactions might be. Same thing here, right? You need to have an outline set so that you have those trigger points. You can look down at your outline and say, all right, we're talking about this and you can talk on it. You should never be reading anything from anywhere. Okay. You should know it all. Okay. The forwards and backwards, like I said, include talking points such as introducing the project. I've been in a lot of defenses where they, where they just kind of skip that whole point and they go straight to the results. Then that drove you to your research. Why, why were you interested in the research? You know, methods used. You're going to talk about the results eventually, right? As you move down through your defense, significance of the results. And obviously, we're going to talk on recommendations as well. This is a big one. I know Aspen, for the DMP, you guys have cohorts. So I'm assuming you guys work together. And, you know, and that's a great tool to network. When I went for my, um, for my doctorate, we had cohorts as well. And I'm still really good friends with about 10 of my cohort partners out of the 20 that I went through with. We're at, we have our own Facebook group, you know, and what we did is we, you know, we didn't all graduate at the same time, but, you know, like I graduated first and, you know, and then we, what we did is we, we talked people through it, you know, that they had questions, we were there to provide a resource for them. We were able to network with them, you know, help them out, give them the encouragement and really assist them in, in moving forward with their dissertation. Someone brought up, uh, attend another defense within your school. Okay. 
I know the DSCS, we put it in our lounge when there's an, when there's going to be a defense. EDD program does as well when there's going to be a defense. Guess what? You guys go to those. All right. You can see how the structure is going to be. You can see what kind of questions might be asked. You know, you can see that the meter of, of how it's going to be the culture, the feeling of a defense. And I would recommend that everyone do that. Talk to some colleagues too, that have already gone through this, you know, ask them what surprised you, you know, what, was there anything that like caught you off guard? You're getting insider information, right? It's ask them what they wish they would have done differently, you know, or what was their overall feeling during, during the process. So there's a lot that can be done within your personal network. And again, it's part of being in an online school too, right? You know, it's part of building that community together as, as one university. We, we live in separate areas throughout this whole world, you know, and Aspen University brings us all together, right? Under one roof and we can, we can talk with each other. And that's one of the greatest things about online school is that I can, I can talk to people in Washington, Brazil, you know, New York City and work and collaborate with them. You have the opportunity to network and, and build relationships with some really awesome people throughout the world by attending ASP. Number three here is you want to really be able to anticipate questions. Okay. You, you should be able to figure out, you know, what questions you're going to have or what questions might be sparked from your presentation. I see a lot of students who they're not prepared. Right. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this, you know, this, this presentation, but um, again, they're not prepared and you ask them questions and, and they're just like, whoa, you know, and they look at you blankly and then they, they, they're looking through their papers or they're going through their PowerPoints backwards and they're trying to figure out what the answer is when I'm not going to lie, it's not good. Okay. So we want to anticipate certain questions that might come up and you should be able to answer the question. You should be a subject matter expert enough to be able to work around those questions. And if it's really an oddity or an outlier of a question, there is absolutely no problem with saying, you know what? I'm not hundred percent sure. Let me get that. Okay. But think about what are some questions that your committee might ask? Well, if you're talking about educational leadership, you know, and you touch on motivational theory, maybe they're going to ask a question about motivational theory. If you're talking about algorithms, maybe you might get some questions on algorithms, but you should be able to anticipate the questions that are going to be asked. So some common questions that you might find and you might be asked might be, was there anything that surprised you about your research? So think about that for a minute. How would you answer that? You know, if you were, if you had not thought about that question ahead of time, would that throw you, right? How can your research findings be put into practice? Now, even though you provided recommendations, what else, what else is there? Deep dive, think, think deeper. How did your research questions evolve during the research process? And why did you choose this topic? and get people's life stories, you know, why they chose it. And it's, it's so much fun to listen to the, you know, the reasons and the why behind the reason for getting their degree and the reasons why they chose a particular topic. There are other questions that are out there. There are sheets full of them. If you go on to Google, you can go online and, and find common questions asked during defense. And you can prep for those questions. You can ask your chair, you know, what might be some questions that will be asked? Your chair should know some of the questions that should be asked too, or you can work with them one-on-one -on -one to come up with some potential questions that can be asked. Step number four is practice. And you can see I put the cube times 100 on there, right? I'm not being serious, though I would like to be serious that you should practice this about a hundred times, but you know, we're not going, we're not going to be that unrealistic. But it goes without saying, you should practice your defense. Okay. There's some chairs that will require that you submit your PowerPoint presentation to two weeks in advance and you work through it with them prior to your defense. All right. If your chair doesn't require that, you know, then you should work through it yourself a minimum of three times. 
you can record yourself like on Zoom or screen Castomatic or, or some kind of program and then review it to see if you have any mannerisms issues. You know, if you're saying all the time or, you know, if you're not looking at the camera or you're finding yourself reading the presentation, looking down and not giving any eye contact and, you know, talking monotone and it really is not very you know, because you're nervous. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through the, you're going to go through your presentation a minimum of three times. Okay. And then you're going to practice the questions that you identified for your committee. And you're going to practice seeing them out loud, seeing the answers out loud. It doesn't matter if they're at, if they ask you them or not, you're still going to practice saying it out loud. All right. Cause you're going to get comfortable with talking about this live. You're going to get comfortable with talking about how the ideas are going to be flowing through your mind. Because once you start answering questions, sometimes you get off that yellow brick road, okay? And you start off on tangents. So you want to keep it on that yellow brick road. Our goal is for you to get to see the wizard eyes. Practice with your chair as needed. If you, if you need to practice with your chair, your chair should be available to practice with you and provide you recommendations. Again, we record your practice and we watch it to identify any mannerisms or improvements. Um, and this is the biggest thing here. And we'll talk about this in just a moment too. But you need, this is a professional presentation. If you are going into your job and you are talking to the board of directors or the CEO or, you know, investors of a private equity firm, would you wear a sweatshirt? and a hat, you know, and be eating food, you know, in the background and have typos all over the place and, and be talking arms arms and not have this information down pat. No, you would not. There's so this is a professional presentation. There's absolutely no reason for it to not, I would almost say flawless. All right. I'm off of, off the soapbox to that one. Just for success. Now I just touched on this. I have seen the gamut. Right. I have seen people look like they just rolled out of bed and they're trying to talk and for their defense. And you're just like, you know what? Why don't we reschedule this and get yourself put together this professional presentation? And I've done it before. It, it reflects on you. Okay. You're a doctor. You want to be professional. You want to show your best foot forward. And you want to look professional, even if you're delivering it virtually. Okay. We're in the age of Zoom. So you could have a shirt and if you're a guy, a shirt and tie on, you know, and if you want to have shorts on or pajama pants or whatever underneath, you get because no one's going to see it unless you stand up and start jumping around because you pass your defense. You want to make sure that you are dressed for success. Okay, you've heard that before. I'm sure you want you, you dress for success. You, you dress for how you want to feel. All right. If you want to feel confident, if you want to feel that you're a professional in the field, you're going to wear a gown, a shirt and tie or a lady, like a, a blouse with a, a business suit or however you feel is professional for you. In addition, you want to have a quiet background and a neutral setting. Again, I've, see, I've been in dissertations where you can't hear them talk, right? You can't, you, they have, there, there's so much stuff in the background. You want to have a nice quiet background. A, so that you can concentrate and that you can provide the best presentation and put your best foot forward, but also it is professional at the same time. Uh, make sure you want to check to make sure your internet's working properly. Okay. Before I got on here, I had to restart my computer twice. Okay? I have a VPN that's running and some, it doesn't work with Zoom. You know, everyone's in and sometimes it just will stop. And so I had to make sure that all my configurations were correct. That is an expectation that you will have to do as well. Don't jump on two minutes before your, your dissertation defense and expect everything to work perfectly. Okay. You need to make sure it works perfectly. So if you look at this picture, this picture, this lady is very professional, lighting, you know, and good, good background, very neutral, right? But if we were to look at these, right? What's going on here? We got, we got, I don't know what that is. Black cat, maybe a skunk in the background. You know, we have, 
I don't know if she's a zombie or, or what, but you can't tell because of the lighting. And then we have some dude who's just sitting there chowing and drinking and talking on his Zoom. Not good, right? These are not good. Do the best that you can do, you know, for, for your defense. Next here, number six, be professional, be prepared. Have, a, have an answer ready for your questions that you might not know, right? It's okay. Like I said earlier, it's okay to say you're not sure about answering a question, but you should be professional enough and you should be an SME enough and have enough knowledge to be able to talk intelligently. And if it's just something that throws you in the left field, or if it's something that, you know, your chair, your chairs and your committee members are not there to derail you. They might have a question, you know, that they're really interested in knowing more about. And it should be something that you are familiar with. If you get something that's crazy out of, out of right field, you know, your chair will probably enter or your chair should intervene and, and help protect you a little bit because that's not a fair question. But again, you're the SME, right? Of this particular gap that you are studying. And so you are the master, right? You, you are at this point the master of this knowledge. You, you know it all. You are the only person in this world that knows this little area as well as, as anybody. Okay. So nothing should really be off limits. Okay. But just note that your, your chairs aren't going to throw you under the bus or your committee shouldn't be throwing you under the bus. And if you really get confused or something, you can always ask them to rephrase your questions. When they're talking or asking questions, don't interrupt. Actively listen. Okay. Because you might know the answer. It doesn't mean that you can interrupt them and say, oh, you know, and go off because you're so excited. Listen to the question. Drink some soda or water. Take a deep breath. Let them finish. Okay. And then proofread your presentation prior. This, this can't be stated enough. Submit, your, submit to your committee seven days prior. Your defense for review. Your PowerPoint presentation. Spot check your presentation a few days before. All right. You need to care enough about your presentation, you know, and sure that you are spot on with every APA formatting, your grammar, your, your pump punctuation, everything should be absolutely perfect. This presentation. All right. The big day has come. Okay. You've got, hopefully you've been taking some studious notes here. We get our seven bonus, number seven bonus, right? Time manager day. All right. A, we're going to dress for success, right? One, two, we're going to show up early and check our tech, right? Three, we're going to practice one more time for, it's more of a sanity check. Make sure that you are in tune with what you're talking about. You're going to eat a healthy meal, all right? You're going to drink plenty of water, you know, flush out all those evil toxins that are all those negative toxins that are in your body so you can put forth your best effort maybe go for a walk release some anxiety and then now you're ready for your presentation and for your defense bam celebration time guess what you have finished look at all these smiling faces you're so excited everyone's everyone's super super pumped for you it's time to time to celebrate. You've earned it. You've done the research. You've done the preparation. You've given one heck of a presentation. You've answered the questions. You, you're ready to roll, right? You're ready to now go out and get paid for research and uh, get paid for doing this, right? Instead of paying for being, for doing it. Let's, anyone have any questions, concerns, complaints, criticisms, and I'll turn it over to Heather. During the question and answer period, most of the questions were, were related to specifics in terms of the defense. Things like, exactly how long is an oral defense? Exactly how long should my presentation be? How long do people ask questions for? How long is the deliberation? And it was reiterated that this can vary by your discipline, it can vary by your program, and that's why it is so important to refer to your handbook, to be having these conversations with your chair. But if we talk about generalities, in general, a typical oral defense will be about an hour. The presentation, again, while it varies 20 to 30 minutes, 
followed by the question and answer period. So typically there is not a dialogue and questions happening during your presentation. That is why it is so important for you to practice because your committee will be sitting back waiting for a formal presentation. At the end of the presentation, that is when the question and answer period occurs, and then there's some time, often towards the end for deliberation. In some programs or schools, the deliberation may happen after the defense, and then you come back together. The deliberation is just how it sounds. Your committee discusses your presentation and your answers to the questions, and then decides, are you going to pass your oral exam? as is, your oral defense as is, are you going to pass with some revisions, are they minor revisions, are they major revisions, or in some cases, although it's rare, are you going to be asked to redefend? Typically, when students are asked to redefend, this is because they have not practiced, and again, this does need to be a formal presentation, or because they're unable to appropriately answer the questions in a way that satisfies the committee that they really are owning that research and owning whatever aspect the questions were related to. So for example, if you hire a consultant to help you with your statistics, they should be showing you exactly why you're doing this analytical strategy and walking you through what is exactly is happening, how you're interpreting the printouts, assisting you writing up things not doing it for you because you will have to ask you will have to answer questions about this during your defense so those were the the majority of the questions were related to that there were some questions that students had concerned about interactions with committee members if you have any concerns based on your proposal oral defense if something happened during your proposal oral defense that was uncomfortable and is making you nervous for your final oral defense, then please have a candid conversation with your chair. Again, your chair is there to guide you and shepherd you through this process, and they will be able to help. I want to rem remind everyone that you can find all our doctoral student support webinars on the Aspen University and United States University YouTube. And while this was the last presentation for 2022, we can't wait to kick off an entire new roster of speakers for the 2023 series. And our first one will kick off on January 18th. That is the third Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. I look forward to seeing you then.